Hi, everyone. My name is Ren Ningdong. I'm from Sense Time. Very appreciate to introduce the deep learning technology in remote sensing applications. As we all know, nowadays, we have more and more satellites over the sky, which provide a huge amount of data waiting to be analyzed. If we use traditional way, which means human eyes, it takes countless money and time to get information we want. Fortunately, right now we have AI technology, combined supercomputing power, millions of imagery and telemetry algorithms. We can transfer data into market insight with one click. After several years dedicated in remote sensing vertical, we have developed more than 20 kinds of algorithms to deal with different objects in such a big satellite imagery. We detect aircrafts, roads, buildings, ships, and different types of land use, such like water, green space, and so on. Combined with some branches of those algorithms, we can make impacts in different scenario. I would like to show you some specific cases. First, we share that by a broad scenario, land cover mapping. Land cover mapping is a basic process to categorize and describe the surface on Earth. It provides fundamental data from various management and research applications such as food production, forecast, urban planning, flood control, disaster prevention, and other earth system studies. At the beginning of this year, we used land cover mapping algorithm to estimate the fire area in Australia. Compare the mapping results before and after the fire, we can see the fire area accounts for 28.7% of the total area of Kagero Island. So land cover mapping products play an important role in maintenance sustainability related applications. In this work, we aim to build, we aim to produce high resolution land cover map for the whole of China. Supervised deep learning methods have been a widely adapted approach for this task. However, training a deep neural network requires a vast number of accurately annotated images. As high resolution satellite image interpretation is labor intensive, time consuming, and it especially demands a high level of expertise Existing high resolution land cover data set are scarce or large area. To address the above issue, some studies began to utilize existing public land cover products produced by automated and semi-automated processes to build a large scale data set. However, the overall accuracy of the global and the regional land cover products are between 64% and 88%, which means they contain plenty of inaccurate labels. So how to design a robust and generalized learning method to handle noisy labels? And we also need to consider the computational efficiency of large scale land cover mapping. In this work, we use a large scale data set built by combining the latest 10 meter resolution land cover product with the three meter resolution satellite images. The data set provides a real world challenge for training with noisy labels. To cope with the pixel level noisy labels, we propose a workflow with a noise correction approach. We correct the noisy labels during the training stage to obtain a relatively clean label set. We also explore model compression and acceleration. As a result, the land cover mapping of China can be done in 
three days with 64 GPU cards. This slide show, shows our method. First, we use label super resolution method to refine the low resolution results. Then we combine the public open street map data to further optimize the label of water and impervious types. We propose an online noise correction approach, including an uncertainty estimation module, an adaptive noise correction module, and a synergistic noise correction loss. Here we show two examples of the noise correction process on the training data set. As shown in the red rectangles, a clear road and buildings, which both belong to the impervious type, are gradually emerging during the noise correction phase, although they are initially confused with the grassland and cropland. Also, the mislabeled impervious are corrected into the cropland, as shown in the blue rectangles. The black rectangles show the large tracks of pixels mislabeled as grassland are gradually updated to the correct cropland. So those examples reveal that the proposed noise correction approach can effectively eliminate the noise. So we can train the network with the corrected labels to achieve higher performance. This is the overall workflow of our method for land cover mapping. This approach integrates an improved high resolution network, adaptive histogram equalization, and a pruning process that reduces the complexity and improves the efficiency of the model. Considering the dependence on the special information of high resolution remote sensing applications, the improved high resolution network can maintain strong high resolution representations through keeping and fusing different resolution features. Also, we design a post processing strategy to improve the robustness of our approach for the improvers type. To reduce the complexity and improve the efficiency of the model for the national scale land cover mapping, we applied filter pruning via geometric median to compress the neural network based on the above resulting segmentation model. It can calculate the contribution of each filter to the network and remove the redundant filters with linear contribution. As an application of our approach, we produce the first three meter resolution land cover map for the whole of China. The time distribution of high resolution image used for this work is showing the right picture. Compared with 10 meter resolution land cover product, we improve the overall accuracy by more than 6%. Here we show the detailed comparison results of three meter resolution and 10 meter resolution land cover products. In general, our approach can reduce the incorrect pixel predictions in the 10 meter resolution land cover map. Our approach reduces the confusion between impervious and water and obtains more accurate impervious segmentation results. In addition, our proposed approach can better capture linear and small objectives, such as roads. We can see that even through the training starts from a 40 low resolution results, our approach can effectively produce refined three meter resolution and cover maps. By using this product, we help local governments to better understand uh, the composition of urban land. This is a satellite imagery map of Shanghai. We can clearly see where there is the urban land, the purple part, and how much it takes of the whole city, which is about 
39%. Also, we compare different cities and can find regularities. Like all those four cities above have about 80% land cover green, including grassland, cropland, and forest. It's a good symbol for developing a balanced ecosystem. Then we can zoom in a little bit. We can not only monitor the whole city, but a piece of forest. Imagine you are a forester, you can find out what happened in your forest if you stay inside. Sometimes it takes lots of time to find there is a deforestation. However, with our forest change detection, we can help to find the deforestation very easily and make efficient response. There are two images collected at different time. The yellow part are the forest change we detected automatically with high accuracy and speed. Another showcase for deforestation detection. We can find someone make the forest to the road. Apart from this, we can also focus on a city inside. For example, damage inspection after earthquake building extraction, road extraction, and so on. I will take building extraction as an example to introduce how we extract and understand urban areas. Building extraction from remote sensing images have been studied for decades. Traditional building extraction approaches include shadow index, age regularity, or line fragment-based methods, and so on. In recent years, more building extraction studies are based on pixel-wise semantic labeling methods. Semantic segmentation models and instance segmentation models have been widely explored for building extraction tasks. Despite the substantial efforts over recent decades, Automatic building extraction methods still suffer from an unsatisfactory accuracy and cannot replace the traditional manual annotation way so far. There exists a great description between the outputs generated from those methods and the building polygons annotated by human annotators. The outlines of Building objects predicted from those methods are in a curved shape, while the ground truth building polygons are manually annotated in a line-based manner with a limited numbers of edges and vertices. Moreover, it is very difficult and impractical for the human annotators to make corrections on those outputs because the efforts for correcting the prediction might succeed the one for annotating a new polygon. So recent annotation studies can be categorized into pixel-wise segmentation methods, counter-based me methods, and vertex-based methods. Compared with the pixel-wise and counter-based annotation methods, the vertex-based Annotation methods are more suitable for the building polygons that are annotated, annotated in a line-based manner. So we propose an annotation pipeline for efficient and accurate annotation of building polygons. This slide demonstrates the pipeline for building annotation of an image. The overall pipeline consists of four main steps. The first and the third steps are completed based on automatic models. And the second and the fourth steps are completed interactively by human annotators. 
First, we generate the initial building sanitation results and age orientation prediction of the full image using model F, which is a multitask sanitation model. Each predicted building instance on the building sanitation mask is automatically fit with a bounding box. Second, we show the predicted building instance with bounding box to the first human annotator. This annotator is required to delete the bounding box, which is predicted by model F, but not in the ground truth. And add bounding box, which is in the ground truth, but is not predicted by model F. When all operations of removing and adding bounding box are completed by the first human annotator, we use model C to generate the building segmentation results and age orientation prediction for each instance. And apply our vertex generation module, model V, to transform the segmentation results to polygon vertices. The human annotators does not need to wait for the vertex generation process as it is completed offline. Finally, the second annotator is required to correct the polygon vertices that do not satisfy the accuracy demands to generate the final annotation results. Through reducing the required number of clicks for both bounding boxes and polygon verticals, our proposed annotation pipeline effectively improves the annotation efficiency for each image. Here is a demo of our method and the results. Hey, hi, sorry, I'm just interrupting because there's someone who doesn't know that they have to turn off their audio. So it's Mohammed, <laughs> can you turn off your audio, please? Because everyone can hear all your noise. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, Remian, can you make me the host uh, so I can uh, unmute? Uh, uh, can you unmute yourself? How to give you the... I think he did it now. I think it should be fine already. He already uh, no, it. okay. No, no, he's fine. Yeah, okay. No, he's fine. Uh, please uh, continue. Okay. Okay, as an application, we extract buildings and roads in a new district in Xi'an. Here shows some results. The green part are the buildings, and the yellow and the blue part are the roads. It's easy to find that both of those two features changed dramatically in the last 20 years. Using AI technology and satellite imagery, we witness how a district transformed from a countryside 
to an urban area. We can also detect the building change in the city. There are two images collected at different times. The green parts are the building change we detected. We zoom in this area. We can see which buildings are newly built, which buildings are removed, and which buildings are rebuilt. By tracking the urbanization trend, we help local authority to monitor the change of the city and build sustainable com communities in the future. In practical, high resolution images play an important role in building extraction, small object detection, semantic labeling, and so on. However, due to the limitation of the underlying technology and the high cost of hardware, the observed high resolution images often suffer from incomplete coverage in terms of space or time and cannot meet the growing demand for productions and applications. Image super resolution technology provides a low cost and effective way to obtain or supplement high resolution images. By reconstructing high resolution images from relatively low resolution image, but easily available image, so we also focus on the super resolution for remote sensing image. In more recent years, single image super resolution have received great attention. There have been many related studies, especially deep learning based methods. However, due to the limited prior acknowledge in single image super resolution, it is still a challenging problem to reconstruct the fine texture of high resolution image at large upscaling factors. Actually, we already have many high resolution images. The publicly available Google Earth image have significantly facilitated the usability of high resolution images. Although many high resolution images are available, sometimes they fail to meet the demands of applications. For example, linking long time series or specific time images and the super resolution technology is still needed in this case. So the existing high resolution Google Earth image could facilitate new opportunities for image super resolution tasks. A low resolution image in many cases can be matched to a corresponding high resolution image as shown in this picture. Intuitively, a, gra a Google Earth high resolution image can provide extra information and may assist the reconstruction of fine textures in low resolution image. So for the remote sensing super resolution task, we consider using publicly available high resolution image from Google Earth as a reference image to help reconstruct the fine texture from low resolution image. So based on the Google Earth images, we build a reference based remote sensing super resolution data set. Here we show some examples of the high resolution and reference pair in this data set. And the propose an end-to-end -end reference super resolution network for remote sensing image. This method can extract the reference features and align them to the low resolution features. And then transfer the texture information in the reference features to the reconstruction of high resolution images. Here we present a virtual comparison of the results. Compared to other super resolution methods, our approach recovers finer texture details. 
and the results are more natural and realistic. This is another example. This work demonstrates the effectiveness of reference-based super-resolution method and proves the great potential of such applications of such approach in the field of remote sensing. Next, I will show more examples. This is a super-resolution example from 0.5 meter to 0 0.125 meter. This is another example. This super resolution method not only improves the virtual quality of remote sensing images, but also contributes to the subse subsequent task, such as building extraction. We use the same building extraction model on both 0 0.8 meter resolution image and 0 0.2 meter super resolution image. We can see the building extraction results are more accurate on the super resolution image. All the applications and methods introduced today are integrated into Sense Earth, a geospatial analysis platform online. You can enter this website to learn more about our algorithms and productions. Here is a demo of this website. First, choose an area or upload your own image. Then choose an application, for example, building extraction. You can use the custom box to select the region and set some simple parameters. And wait a moment, you will see the power of AI technology. And you can use different ways to display the results. Other applications, ship detection, aircraft detection, road extraction. Okay, thanks for your attention. For any questions, please write to this email. That's it. Uh, thank you, Renmin, for a very interesting uh, talk. So I think that we may have a few minutes for question and uh, Q and A. And I actually see two questions in the chat box. So the first one uh, comes from Adu. The question was, during land cover mapping of China, what is the software you have used to generate training data from existing data and the land cover mappers? Is there any processing task you perform? Yeah, please. You, can you see the question in the yeah, chat box? Yeah, I can see this question. OK, go ahead. Is, is there an processing task? Um, we can we download the existing land cover maps 
and can use it directly. There is no mm, complex pre-processing. We only crop and use the mm, uh, latitude and longitude to match the our planet image and the land cover map. Okay. Second question. Do you have issues with registering low resolution and high resolution images? How do you handle? Mm, we both the low resolution and high resolution have um, the inf the geophysic information, so it can be matched easily. So there's no issue with uh, registration, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, is there an, a way to understand the like super resolution difference? Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, it, uh, so if anyone has a question, maybe you can just uh, unmute yourself and uh, uh, and speak up. Or you can raise your hand. Uh, okay, I think this uh, uh, most uh, the most recent question was: What was the order of magnitude? training examples used for land cover classification? Mm, I see many questions, which is the... So the, I think the second last one was, uh, what's the order of magnitude of training examples? Like how many training examples used for land cover classification? Uh, uh, okay, I see this question. Um, we we use um, fifty thousand paired image for 50, the land Yeah. Okay. Uh, so third to the last was uh, I think is which model do you recommend to detect LULC change detection and for future prediction of the change. Uh, prediction. Uh, you we use semantic segmentation models. Uh, right now we use high resolution network, which proposed in CVPR uh, two thousand nineteen. Uh, okay. So the a new one. Can we use multi-dimension CNN on this platform? I think it is referring to the sense earth. Uh, it's, uh, no, it's, uh, uh, you can see our products, but may not use, um, it's not a training platform. I mean, it's built in, right? It's, uh, you have a, yeah. Uh, preaching the network, not... right? So it's just you, you uh, upload your image and you perform the... Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So it's not for the de developer. Yeah, we have another platform, uh, since layer, but uh, uh -huh. I'm not sure it's public. Okay. So question is the platform open for trial for non-commercial? Is the sense of us is open, is freely available or is commercial? Mm, we uh, sense earth uh, only for display, maybe I think. Mm. So is it char charge a fee for user or is it free? Yeah. Maybe uh, first you can use it freely uh, and download several image 
if you want to oh, okay. download more products, maybe. So it's like has a trial, right? A, yeah. Okay. Uh, so the question was, could we use your training data? So do you have any uh, training uh, data set? Like, uh, which released? data set you mean? Land cover mapping or uh, super resolution? Um, land cover mapping data set is not public, but uh, our super resolution data set is available soon. Uh, so you have a publication uh, or like uh, a this website? Work still, this work still under review. After uh, it's online, the super resolution data set is public, will be public. Okay. And uh, so one question was about loss function. What kind of loss function was used? Mm, in land cover mapping, we uh, we use cross entropy loss. Uh, in in building extraction, we use bier binary uh, entropy, and in super resolution, we use L one loss. Mm -hmm. One question about the hyperspectral pen sharpening. I, I don't think you have, uh, have any, presented any work about pen sharpening, do you? Mm. Which question? I didn't follow. Uh, which, which algorithm you suggest for hyperspectral pen sharpening? Um, I think um, we high special image. I didn't. I do not um, do uh, much work okay. about the high special. Image. Right, right. Yeah, that's um, what I thought. So the depths of your CN, like uh, well, number of layers, maybe the maximum number. Of layers. Mm. I'm not sure exists depth, but high resolution network is much larger than a uh, small network such like UNET. It based uh, mm, multi high resolution features. Uh, one question was about GPU configuration required to do the building extraction. Like, uh, so the question was if he want to do building extraction, like what's the minimum GPU? Mm. Uh, mm. Building extraction, uh, you can use one GPU cards. Um, one GPU card is enough, but if you want to uh, train the building extraction models, maybe you can use more GPU cards Okay, so I think there's one question is similar, right? How can we get a super resolution training data set? So how do we get the high resolution? Uh, this training data set, data? maybe you can send me the email when our work uh, public, I can send you the full uh, paper. And we also will release the code and uh, and our data set. Cool. Uh, let's see. So, can you suggest the open source platform to try this method? So, if they want to try this method, what kind of a platform you would suggest? Mm -hmm. We some open source platform. Uh, we. We now use the platform built by uh, ourselves, and we use um, PyTouch. I'm not sure that is. I'm not sure it is a platform, but we use PyTouch or TensorFlow, and to uh, build the models. Uh, 
maybe need some um, base of uh, program. Uh, okay, I think we maybe can take a, a few more questions. I think now the last one is. Uh, uh, I see a question. Your application is based on your network. Yes, all the above uh, applications we use CNN network. Mm -hmm. So that's one interesting question about uh, building a image net in remote sense the image. What do you think about that? Uh, Maybe image. we already have many uh, such like land cover classification data set. And many colleagues and challenges, competitions have large scale data set we, we can use easily. Mm -hmm. Uh, one more question about uh, remove cloud, remove cloud in optical image. So, have you uh, come to this question uh, problem about cloud? Uh, okay, we actually we have cloud detection algorithm, um, but we still works on this issue. Mm -hmm. I think we can take uh, two more questions, uh, last two questions, okay? So what other applications can be considered in load detection? So have you tried load detection? Uh, yes, we have a load detection algorithm and we can statistic the results and we, maybe we can find many interesting issues in the city inside. Okay, so I think we are running out of time. Uh, maybe one last, last question is uh, very perfect to close the webinar. So what's your email? Maybe you can type okay. your email okay. in the chat box. Yeah. Okay, so everyone, thanks for uh, joining the, the webinar with us today. And uh, uh, we uh, uh, appreciate uh, very much. And uh, we also uh, uh, thank our speaker, Ruming, and uh, uh, thanks for her very interesting uh, uh, presentation. Okay, so bye bye. So the webinar is uh, closed. Thanks, bye. Bye, Remy. Uh, so please, Remy, you can leave the uh, meeting room. So yeah, we, we will all be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.